So in this video we want to discuss orthogonal transformations and the idea that these types of transforma transformations preserve norms, angles, and distances, which is why they're called rigid motion transformations. They don't distort objects when, uh, when you transform them with an orthogonal transformation. So the claim is that orthogonal transformations preserve norms, and when we say norm, when we're talking about vectors, this is just the length of the vector. Length of vector. So if we start with the vector u and transform it using a, an orthogonal transformation t, then the transformed vector u, or the image of u under that transformation, will have the same length as the original vector. Angles are preserved, so if we have vectors u and v and we transform them, with our orthogonal transformation, the angle between the two vectors after they've been transformed will be the same as the angle between the two original vectors. And if we have points in the plane, P and Q, which uh, can be identified, can always identify a point in the plane uh, via a vector, the distance from P to Q will be the same as the distance from R to S if we transform P and Q using our, uh, our um, orthogonal transformation. So in other words, what we're saying here, if we've, we've got points P and Q and there's some distance between them, and then we transform the point P to some new point R and transform the point Q to some new point S, then the distance from R to S, the transform points will be the same as the distance between the original two. And these claims are all driven by the fact that in the previous video we demonstrated that dot products are preserved under orthogonal transformations and each of these measures, one, two, and three here, norms, angles, um, and distances are all definable using dot products. So the fact that we demonstrated dot products is pres uh, are preserved actually drives the proof uh, for each of these claims. So. Before we jump into this one, what we want to remember is if we've got some vector v, so reviewing stuff from uh, other classes, hopefully trigonometry, if we, if vector v has components v1 and v2, the norm of v, which is just its length, is going to be the sum, by the Pythagorean theorem, is going to be the sum of the squares of the vector components the length of v, its length by the Pythagorean theorem is the sum of the squares of the vector components. And what we want to recognize is that the stuff inside here that's coming from the Pythagorean theorem can just be gotten by taking the dot product of v with itself. So if I took, if I take v dot v, so I take the dot product of v with itself, we wind up with v1 times v1 is v, v1 squared, plus v sub 2 times v sub 2 is v sub 2 squared. So we can always rewrite the length of a vector using dot product notation by saying, hey, we just need to take the square root of v dotted with itself. So in this case, what we want to do is uh, show that for the proof of 1, we want to show that length is preserved by orthogonal transformation. So what's the, so transform vector u into into its new uh, into its new transform self u prime, right? u prime equals the transform version of u. So this says calculate the length of u prime. Calculate u prime, the vector that's been transformed by the uh, orthogonal transformation. And the idea is we just need to calculate the length of the vector uh, transformed u. So we can do that by taking the dot product of the vector with itself. But how do you transform u? Well, you multiply u, the vector u, by the, transfer, the orthogonal transformation matrix, right? But we showed in the previous video that dot products are preserved. We showed that, that uh, when we take u dot v and transformed u dot transform v, we get the same value. So AU dot 
AU by the previous video that we did, video seven, is the same as U dot U because dot products are preserved by orthogonal transformations. And the square root of U dot U is just the size of U. So this shows that the size of the transform vector U is the same as the size of the vector U itself. If you were going to do a proof of two, which is, and which is asking you to show that angles are preserved, uh, the proof of two, here's, here's generally what you'll need to do. You've got U and V, and we wanna show that angles are preserved. So in other words, when we map these under the transformation, they're gonna become something new. They're not gonna be the same vectors anymore. So we're gonna have transformed V and transformed U, two new vectors. But what we wanna show is that the angle between the transform vectors is the same as the original angle. And the way that you would go about proving this would be to think back to trigonometry and something that you may also have reviewed again in calculus. You know that if you have two vectors, U and V, that the cosine of the angle between the two vectors, if here's U and V, and here's the angle between those two vectors, so we'll call it u and v. The cosine of the angle between the vectors is defined to be u dot v. There's a dot product divided by the size of u times the size of v. And because it's been defined in terms of norms, which we just did something with, and dot products, you should be able to show that the angle between u and v is the same as the angle between transformed u and transformed v. So I'll leave the, uh, the writing of the proof to you in the homework. I won't ask you to prove three. You will be asked to prove two. But this is the relationship that you need to remember from trigonometry and perhaps um, you saw it again in calculus. This is the thing to use right here.